Amen. Come on, we're going to go to the scripture this morning. It says, blessed is the man. We're going to Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Yes. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Yes. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Yes. The ungodly are not so, Allah are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Yes. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand and praise one more time. Amen. Amen. We're going to call the praise team at this time. Amen. I guess we're going to sing what my brother was about to start playing. Huh? Come on, put your hands together, y'all.
working on our behalf. Come on, he woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Hallelujah. If we don't take that for granted today, I don't take it for granted today. Hallelujah. He's on my side. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are
set us on that rock to stay. Not to fall down and keep getting up. I know it's a popular song. Amen. But you don't have to live that way. Somebody say, stay up. Stay up. Don't let nothing knock you down. I said, stay up. Stay up. And don't let nothing knock you down. Come on, do I have a witness today? today? Yeah. That God is able to keep you from falling. Yes, yes. Amen. I'm so excited today. Amen. Because we're about to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the word of God that we come for. I mean, the songs and the testimonies are wonderful. Amen. They, they, they get us into the atmosphere of praise and it, it just acknowledges his presence. That's what praise and worship is about. You know, he said that what we should acknowledge him, and that's how we acknowledge him. We know that he's in the building. He, we, first of all, you got to know that he's in you. Because yes. being in the building ain't good enough. Tell somebody, being in the building, it ain't good enough. Ain't good enough. Come on, he's got to be in you. Come on, is God in you? Yes. Are you in God? Yes. Today, by none other than our minister, Sheila White. Amen. I gotta tell you, he's one of my favorite preachers in the world. Of all the television and evangelists and all the people, she's one of my favorite preachers in the world. Amen. So, without further ado, amen, we're going to bring up this woman of God. Amen. And she can say, amen, what the Holy Ghost has put in her heart. Amen. Him 
my two sons to be bondmen. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your handmaid has not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Yes. Then he said, Go, borrow you vessels abroad of all your neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when you are come in, you shall shut the door upon you and upon your sons, and shall pour out unto all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Yes. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. Yes. Somebody say, poured out. Pour out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the men of God. He said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your children live of the rest. Somebody said, Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your breakthrough is in your house. Yeah. Come on, your breakthrough yeah. is in your house. Yeah. Amen. We're reading this passage very familiar to most people about a widow who was married to a man who was a prophet. And he was from a group of prophets, a school of prophets that was under the leadership of Elijah. Mm -hmm. And these groups or schools of prophets were located in Ramah. And this is where the prophets had gathered uh, to worship and to pray and ask God for wisdom. Uh, we have schools of prophets now, we say, and we say they're going to get taught how to be a prophet. How many know you can't be taught how to be a prophet? Amen. You have to be called. Amen. Not taught, amen. So she was a widow. He had died, and he was a faithful prophet during that time. And she cried to Elijah, was telling him the situation, and they had some debt. They were left in debt when he died, and she said, you know, I, I don't know, the creditors are coming for us. And in those days, the Mosaic law said that if you owe debt, and someone died and you couldn't pay it, or even they didn't die, but you just couldn't pay it, there was no bankruptcy in those days. You could file a claim bankruptcy. The law says that you would have to be a slave. Either you or somebody, your family, your sons, your children, they would be bondmen. They would be indentured servants. They would work for money, but not for themselves. They would work to pay off their debt only. And so this woman was frantic. She said, oh, they're going to take my sons and they're going to put them into slavery to pay off this debt. And in those days that you would be a slave, and in the year of Jubilee, which is the 50th year, you would be set free. Yes. But we don't know what year this was. This could be year number one, who knows? But anyway, no matter what year it was, this woman did not want her sons to go into slavery. Amen. And so she cried unto Elijah and he asked her, well, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? I'm not talking about the, the roof and the furniture and the windows, but I'm talking about your house. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Your spirit, yeah. your soul, your yeah. heart. What do you have in your house? Yeah. And the scripture says that she replied, oh, I don't have anything. In other words, I don't have nothing. I, I, I don't have anything in my house. Only except a pot of oil. And so she's thinking that this pot of oil, now when we say pot in the scripture, I'm not talking about a big giant caldron pot, but I'm talking about a small jar, a flask of oil, not muzo that you fry chicken with. <laughs> Remember, she's a wife of a, 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 a prophet, this anointing oil we're talking about. It's a small jar, and you put it in, you insert it inside of a, a little vessel. So it's a small jar of oil. She said, that's all I got in my house right now. We know we were hungry. 
We owe, we in debt, we don't have no groceries. There's pretty much nothing here but this pot of oil. And so sometimes our perspective could get distorted. This woman was going through, and to her, she had nothing but a pot of oil. Yes. Now, how many know that that pot of oil, that small drawer of oil, was nothing to her? Her perspective and her thinking was faulty. Yes. Sometimes you think that you got nothing going on for you right. in your house. Right. You may be going through a dry season of indebtedness. You may feel like I have nothing and I'm in debt right now. There's nothing going on for me. I love the Lord. And I'm saved and I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. But right now I feel like I have nothing. I feel like I'm depressed. Sometimes we go through a, a, a dry spell and we feel like there's nothing on our side. Our perspective, the way we see things is distorted. Now your perspective is your point of view of how you see something. And sometimes the enemy will start messing with our perspective. Yes. And he wants you to think that you got nothing going on. Mm -hmm. Your perspective is how you see what's important and what's not important. Yes. And to her at that moment, that small joy uh, draw of oil was not important. So she said, I've got nothing. How many know she had what she needed? Yeah. <laughs> We read she had what she needed, but she didn't know. I, I want you to know that you got what you need. Yes. It's on the inside of your house. Yes. You got to trust God that you have everything that you need. Yes. But she didn't realize it. God has placed in all his children that are saved the gifts, the anointing, the, the spirit of God. He has placed it inside of you Amen. so you have what you need. But you just got to realize it. You got to ask God to help me, Lord, yes. to identify my jar oil. Yes. It's in your house. Yes. You got what you need. When we stay in the Word of God and when we seek His will, He will help us to identify the key in the means to what we have for our breakthrough. Right now, you might need a breakthrough. It might be a, a dark time in your life. Yeah. So she said, I ain't got nothing. Amen. No breakthrough here. Nothing here. Discern your pot of oil. Know how to use it. She didn't know how to use it. She just let it sit up there in the cupboard somewhere on the shelf, walking around thinking that she had nothing. But when you begin to seek God for your life, you got gifts sitting on the inside of us.
then when she got back with all the vessels, she had her sons go out. Go out, go borrow, go borrow, and bring back all you can. The Bible said she came back with all these vessels. And see, we got to realize that God wants to do something for us. He wants to bless us. He wants to prosper us, amen, no matter how it looks. Yeah, so she went out and she borrowed all these vessels. And he said, when you come back, I want you to pour the oil from that small jar I was telling you about that she had, that she thought she didn't have anything. Take that small jar of oil and I want you to pour out into the other vessels. Yes. Now, our perspective might say, how come she's going to pour a small drop of oil into a large vessel? Mm. It's going to run out. <laughs> That's not going to work. Why would I do that? But the scripture said that she was obedient to the man of God. She took what she thought was nothing. How many that God would take your nothing and make it into something?
Yeah. So I wondered, he told her to get empty vessels. So if, if you're not empty, how can God fill you up with yeah. what he wants you to have? Mm. Now sometimes we come full, but we're not full of what God wants us to have. We're full of ourselves. Yeah. We're full of flesh. Yeah. We're full of doubt. We're full of fear. We're full of anxiety.
bless you. Your perception needs to change. Pour out into your perception that you can see that God wants to give you more increase. Transformation will take place as you exercise what God has given you. Amen. Open up your mouth. Give God praise. Give God glory. Read his word. Witness to somebody. Come on, pour out. Even in your giving, you might not have much. I don't got nothing to give. I can't give no tithes. Is he for real? I don't have any money, but I promise you, if you pour out, hallelujah, all that you have. I'm reminded of the old little widow. She had one might, and she put it in the offering. And I heard Jesus say she gave more than all. Because she gave all that she had. And God will take that, what you have, what you think you don't have. He'll bless you. He'll multiply it. Glory be to God. But first, you gotta put it into the master's hand. Yes. You gotta allow God to bless it. Uh-huh. In the feet of the five thousand, Jesus said, "Give me the fish and the loaves." Mm-hmm. And the scripture said that He blessed it. Yes. He blessed it. Ah, uh, He blessed it. He blessed it because it was put into His hands. Yes. We can't hold on to it our hands. We got to put it into his hands and, and trust him that he'll make a way out of nowhere. But he blessed it as the disciples distributed it. It's always in the giving out, in the pouring out, in the passing out, in the distribution. Things grew. Did you notice that? Yes. You remember when the, the, the wedding, the king of Galilee wedding, they ran out of a uh, red juice of wine at the wedding. And Jesus, Mother Mary said, we don't have enough wine for our guests. And that was so embarrassing, right? At a reception, you ran the floor at the wedding. And she said, whatever he tells you to do, whatever. do it. Whatever. I know you don't have enough. Mm-hmm. And the Bible said that the servants, they poured the water out. And as they were pouring, it became what they needed to become. It became what they needed at that moment. They needed wine at that moment, it became that. And it's always in the pouring out. The scripture says they walked and poured out. As they served, they had more than enough. So it sounds like to me that if you just go ahead by faith, and do what God tells you to do, he'll take care of the rest. Yes, if you only believe that he will do it, he will work it out. That healing that you need, oh, it's coming. Pour out. Pour out. Ask God to help you identify what he has given you, and then you use it. Yes. Commit yourself to it. Pour out to others, and you're sure to get a good blessing. Pour out. She was able to pay her debt. And people might say, well, the oil stopped because she had no more vessels. She should have borrowed more. She should have done that. She should have done this. But I'm telling you, at the end of the passage, it said that she paid her debt and she was able to live off the rest. So it's not like she had more than enough. According to the amount of your faith, The measure of your faith, God will bless you. She had enough faith to borrow what she could borrow. She borrowed what she could borrow. Don't say she should have borrowed. She borrowed what she could borrow. That's all God is asking you to do. Do not tell you to do. Be obedient. And God will bless you in an abundantly way. Amen. Stand to your feet and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. is in your house. Yes. People of God is in you. I'm talking to the people of God. It's in you. Yes. And the people that are not, they don't have Christ on the inside, you have the opportunity today to allow God to come into your house and he'll be able to plant his grace, his provision, 
his gifts in you so that you will always have what you need. Yes. Father God, I'm praying today for every listener under my voice that if they don't know you, oh God, they would pray this prayer. Dear Lord, come into my heart. Lord, save me. Forgive me all of my transgressions. God, pour into me all that you have in the name of Jesus, that I may serve you, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you for that prayer, Lord. And I pray for every, every soul, God, that's under my voice, that you would help them to discern their jar of oil. Yes. Help them to discern the gift, yes. the anointing that you have put inside them, Lord. I ask you to clarify that per perspective, God. Yes. Help them to see clearly what you want to do for them, God. What's in them, oh God. Help them to know your will, God. In your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, bless your people right now, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for helping us, oh God, in our dry season to pour out, to go out, oh God, and have empty vessels, availability, oh God. Help us to be available, God, that you'll be able to pour out into us, Lord, to make us what you desire for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray.